Now that we have Cabana installed, we can play around with it. Really, that's the best way to learn it. Just sort of dive in and explore. It's uh, pretty intuitive to use. Let's play with the works of William Shakespeare. You might recall that we installed that way back on our setup lecture, and maybe we can extract some insights about the works of William Shakespeare, because we can, and it's sort of a fun example to work with initially. So let's dive in. Once Kibana is installed, you should be seeing a screen like this. Under the Management tab should be selected by default, and the first thing we need to do is configure an index pattern. This is really the most unintuitive piece of Kibana, so we just need to tell it what index we want to analyze given some pattern. It, it can do more than one at a time given a pattern, but for us, we want to analyze the Shakespeare index that we created earlier, and we can go ahead and hit Create. And you can see that it is picking up all the fields in here. It is good to familiarize yourself with the different fields that you have to work with here, such as speaker and text underscore entry is the actual lines of each line of the plays that are in there. So given that, we can start to mess with Shakespeare data. Click on the Discover tab if you just want to search and interactively mess around with that data. So this is one easy way of doing searches in Elasticsearch without having to write JSON queries. Woohoo! <laughs> we're finally pretty much done with that world. So let's, uh, for example, search for the word die. I mean, Shakespeare was a pretty morbid person. A lot of his plays involved a lot of death and murder and whatnot. And <laughs> you can see that um, he's pretty fond of the word die. And it turns out that in the play A Midsummer's Night's Dream, there's actually a line that just says now die, 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 die. <laughs> wow, it's kind of dark stuff. But, you know, these were dark times. Now we can further break this down by a play name or, or speaker or whatever you want. So let's uh, see how that works. Let's click on play name here. And you can see that with a click of a single button here, we can see how often the word die appears in individual plays. And it is most common in the play Measure for Measure followed by Richard III, and then Henry VI, and Romeo and Juliet, so you can kind of get a little taste here of uh, what the most morbid plays are in the Shakespeare Index. How about by speaker? Looks like uh, these characters say the word die a lot. Talbot, Isabella, Gloucester, Gloucester, these guys are pretty much tied for first place. Uh, who are these people anyway? Who is Gloucester? Well, we can uh, do a search for an individual field up here. All you have to do is say the field name, speaker, colon, Gloucester, for example, and that will search the field name in particular for the term Gloucester. And we can see here that uh, Gloucester appears most frequently in the play uh, Richard III, and also in Henry VI, and uh, also in King Lear. So this character appears in more than one play, which is why he's so popular. And uh, apparently he talks about death a lot. So there you have it. Cool stuff. You can also visualize this stuff if you just click on this handy dandy visualize button. That's pretty awesome, huh? So we can actually get a breakdown right there with a single click of the button of how often Gloucester appears in each individual play. So we can see that he has you know, over 700 lines, 743 to be precise, in Richard III, and in King Lear 364 times, and so on and so forth. And just a brief cameo appearance in, in Henry V. Let's uh, look at visualizations in more depth. We can do some pretty cool stuff here. I mean, visualizations are usually created in the context of like analyzing log data or more structured numerical data and things like that. Because usually it's about, you know, making charts and graphs. But there are visualizations you can do strictly on text data as well. Let's click the uh, handy dandy create a visualization button here. And let's make a tag cloud. So this is cool. We can make a tag cloud out of all the works of William Shakespeare. And it's really easy to do. All we need to do is select the Shakespeare index and go ahead and add in a bucket. We'll start with a bucket for terms and select the text entry dot keyword term. And let's go ahead and make that 100 terms in our tag cloud and just hit play. And there you get a tag cloud of how often each search term appears in the entire works of William Shakespeare. That's kind of awesome, huh? So uh, exit and exuant <laughs> apparently are the most frequently used words in the works of William Shakespeare. And uh, antiphilus, I don't even know what that means. I, I mean, I'm sure that means something very significant to a Shakespeare scholar. And some interesting stuff in here. Bishop, countess, these are all things that appear frequently within the works of William Shakespeare. Uh, what else can we do? Let's do it by speaker instead. See what speakers appear in Shakespeare the most often. And you can see here that overall, the character Gloucester that we looked at earlier is in fact the most popular character in all of William Shakespeare's works. So hey, we've uh, got some interesting insights into Shakespeare by using 
Cabana already. Uh, Hamlet is just second place from the looks of it. And uh, Iago, Falstaff, I've heard of that guy, King Henry V. Very cool stuff. So you can see that with just a few clicks of the mouse here, you can do some pretty interesting stuff in Cabana and get some very visually satisfying results. So it's hard to underestimate the power of that. You know, I mean, it, when you have sort of a nice UI to work with, to actually analyze your data with, it sort of encourages you and motivates you to explore your data more deeply. So it's not just for good looks. You know, I think this does have real value in motivating people to extract more meaning and more insights out of the data that they have. And with Elasticsearch, you can do it very quickly. I mean, think about how quickly that came back, right? Like I just hit play here and bang, that, that tag cloud just came right up. So the real power here is that you can do complex aggregations and visualize them in beautiful ways with Kibana with just a click of the button and a few milliseconds of time. I mean, it's really, really awesome stuff. This gets me irrationally excited. Now I'm gonna show you something else about Kibana that you're really gonna love. If you want to click on the DevTools tab here, check this out. You can actually enter in JSON requests without dealing with the console at all. So if you do want to get down and dirty, uh, we don't have to use the, uh, the console anymore and we don't have to deal with all that craziness about dealing with tabs. So, so we can, for example, just uh, clear out all this existing stuff that we just ran and type in our own arbitrary JSON requests. There is a shorthand available here. Instead of saying, you know, the server name and the port name and curl and all that, we can just type in get, followed with uh, what you would have put at the end of the actual URI for your Elasticsearch host. So, you know, already we've saved, saved quite a few keystrokes. And the beautiful thing is we can actually use the tab key as it was intended. So we can just say query and it's even automatically completing our brackets for us, which saves us even more time. It's automatically tabbing things for us, so a lot easier to deal with it in here. Let's say a match phrase, and we can say title Star Wars, and look, it already closed that off for us. And now we can set up our ags, set up our titles aggregation, which consists of two aggregations, a terms and a sub-aggregation. Called average rating, which contains in turn a average aggregation on the field rating. And looks like we are missing one closing bracket there. But hey, that was a lot easier to type in than using it on the console, right? So we have a somewhat complicated query here. Let's go ahead and hit the play button to execute that. And we got back the same results as before, only it's a lot prettier to look at and a lot easier to type in. So in the future, when you're doing JSON requests, you don't have to use curl anymore. We can actually use this uh, console within Kibana to make life a lot simpler. So. <laughs> Oh man, don't you wish we had this way back at the beginning of this at the beginning of the course. Anyway, that's Kibana for you. So I encourage you to play some more with this. You know, go back to the discover tab or the and search for more specific fields or explore your data in more ways. Click on the visualize tab and see what other visualizations are available and just mess around and you'll quickly get the feel of what you can do with Kibana and I'm going to make you mess around in our next exercise.